Something is wrong here. I can feel it. The air around me is thick with all the ambiguities. He suffocates me, takes the breath from my lungs. Perhaps I'm overreacting. That's what they told me. Maybe my personal biases and hindsight make me see things that aren't there, or not seeing what is. I don't know. All I know is that I feel like I was just handed a shitty cheese, lettuce, and tomato sandwich and told it was a quarter pounder with cheese. Isn't this a good hamburger, Paul? No, asshole. This is crap. Sitting with me in this crowded restaurant are my wife and her best friend. As usual, they share secrets that they don't let me in on. The subtle glances they give each other when they think I'm not seeing tell a story that their lips don't tell. As annoying as it may be, it happens often. But somehow today seems different. There's something else in the air. I don't know why I have this feeling, but I do. They have known each other since childhood, best friends since elementary school. They joined the cheerleading team at the same time and have been inseparable ever since. Even after they graduated from high school and went off to their own colleges, they remained close. Their relationship has always irritated me. I know it's irrational. It was never my intention to dictate to my wife who she could and could not be friends with. She doesn't belong to me. We are partners, not master and slave. But still, she chose me. For better or for worse. Until death separates us. We are connected for life. If there is any aspect of their friendship that I am not happy with, it needs to be addressed somehow and not swept under the rug. But that's exactly what she does. She says, I'm making a big deal out of a mountain. I'm overreacting. Her family tells me the same thing. Paul, you have to understand. They tell me, he's like a brother to CC. Yes, you heard me correctly. Like a brother. That is, her best friend is a man. Of course, you will most likely say the same thing as everyone else. They look at the fact that he was a fan and assume that he is gay and that I have nothing to worry about. Wrong. Gary, her best friend, is 100% straight. In high school, he had sex with more cheerleaders than a quarterback. He had seen them all naked at one time or another. He was always at the bottom of the pyramid, which meant he spent most of his time looking at their asses and grabbing them. He had to make sure he grabbed them correctly so they wouldn't fall. If that meant he had to hold extra tightly onto a soft pair of buttocks, then by God, that's what he had to do. My wife thinks it's funny. The fact that he used his intimate knowledge of the women on the team to sleep with most of the girls in school is like a running joke between the two of them. She tells him how disgusting he is and giggles uncontrollably the whole time. I know most of you are ready to ask the million-dollar question. I can already hear it. I've asked myself this question hundreds of times, and I'll give you the same answer I asked myself. No. According to them, Gary and my wife never went all the way. But doesn't this raise a bunch of other questions? Like, what the hell does that mean? What does to the end mean? If they haven't reached the end, how far is the end? Isn't that what sows doubt? not completely means that something did happen. Asking these questions makes me look like an insecure ass. People look at me like, really, dude? They look and shake their heads. I never received a straight answer, at least not one that completely satisfied me. This has always been a point of contention between us. I love Cece. I trust her. But there is always that nagging feeling of uncertainty. She's trying to make me forget about it, always taking him on dates with Gary and his wife. Oh yeah, sorry. I forgot to mention this. He is married. Another reason why I need to relax. Anyway, Ciara, CC, was always trying to bridge that gap between Gary and me. I know she wants us to be friends. And to be honest, I could see that Gary was trying too. So I let my guard down and relaxed a little. The problem is that we have nothing in common. He doesn't watch sports doesn't work with his hands, and never wants to do anything that would make him sweat. My hobbies include going to the gym, working on my car, and bowling. He also loves dancing, roller skating, and window shopping. I know. Sounds gay. I see he fooled you, too. No matter how hard I try, I just can't get close to Gary. He and I realized this a while ago and stopped trying. We are cordial with each other, but neither of us likes being pulled out and forced to hang out with each other for the sake of my wife. 
we just don't have the heart to tell her about it. So whenever I can, I find reasons why I can't hang out with the four of them. CC usually gets disappointed when I get bored, but after a while it became the new norm. Over the years, she still invited me to come and let me know that I was welcome. But she didn't really expect me to show up. Today, when she invited me to have lunch with Gary and his wife, I decided to go hang out with them. When I agreed, she seemed pleasantly surprised. But she also seemed a little nervous. Arriving at the restaurant, we were there before Gary and his wife, so we took a booth for four. About ten minutes later, Gary showed up, without a wife. He walked up to the booth, smiling from ear to ear. When he saw me, his smile became less sincere and more forced. I felt the temperature change. CC also seemed more anxious than usual. She talked a lot, but nothing worthwhile. It feels more like an attempt to cover an awkward silence rather than a smooth conversation. This unpleasant atmosphere put me on high alert. My senses become heightened. I was acutely aware of everything, including the furtive glances they cast at each other. There was something else there. When we left the restaurant, I couldn't concentrate. As we walked to the car, my thoughts ran in different directions. CC was still very talkative, not saying anything of substance the whole time. It was just getting annoying. What's going on between you and Gary? I suddenly asked, interrupting her meaningless sea of useless words. She stopped and looked at me with her mouth open in surprise. I understand that you guys are angry with me at this moment. I broke rule number one. I suspected my wife of cheating. At this point, I had to pretend that everything was fine, secretly make contact with the private investigator. And then, while he was watching my wife, I had to feed her a false sense of security so that she would let her guard down and make a mistake. Fuck this shit. Paul, what are you talking about? She asked me. I have to admit, she did look genuinely embarrassed. I'm talking about you and Gary. What's happening? Paul, what you're saying doesn't make any sense. Okay, I said, stopping. Let me ask a simpler question. Are you having sex with him? What? She gasps, completely shocked. Do I have sex with Gary? Are you crazy? I admit it. Her absolute shock at the thought of her with Gary actually calmed me down. A little. But I know that I didn't imagine anything. If you're not having sex with Gary, then fine. But something is happening. I need you to be honest with me and tell me what the hell this is. Cece shakes her head and walks forward. I walk faster to catch up with her. When I caught up with her, she said, I can't tell you, Paul. Do not ask. Wait a minute. Do you have something you can't tell me, to your husband, but you have no problem telling Gary about it? Paul, she whines as if begging me to stop this conversation. No, do not ask me. You can ask Gary, but not me. You don't understand, honey, she said mysteriously, gently grabbing my hand. This is a tactic she uses when she wants me to calm down. I shook my hand free waiting for her to clarify what she wanted to tell me. Ciara, you better tell me something, I say decisively. She looks at me with wide eyes, as she always does when I call her by her full name. Then her face looks defeated as she quietly exhales in annoyance. Paul, this is not my secret. I still don't give her space and she eventually gives in. Gary is cheating on his wife. What? Yeah, she says, nodding. He told me not to tell anyone. Even you. I almost breathed a sigh of relief. But then other thoughts start spinning in my head. So he's cheating on his wife, and you're helping him hide it? This is true? She nods again. But you don't have to tell him anything. I promised I wouldn't tell you. By this time, we are already standing at the car, so I unlock and open the door to let her inside. When she gets in... I go around the other side of the car and climb inside. Promise me, Paul. Promise you won't say anything. I don't answer her as I start the car. After I pulled out onto the road, she once again begged me not to say anything. Honestly, I didn't care that Gary was cheating on his wife. This is his business. If he wants to give up on his marriage, then screw them. What bothers me is the fact that my wife not only knows about this, but also helps him. So he's cheating, and you're helping him? I repeat, 
carefully emphasizing the words I want her to pay attention to. Now I think she understands the meaning of what I am saying and begins to back away. Well, it's not like I'm helping him with this. I'm just here to talk to him. This is all. About treason? About everything. Including cheating on his wife. Right? I can see how she is becoming increasingly irritated by the continuous loop this conversation is going through. Me too. I think I have more rights to this. I'm the only one here in the dark. The only reason for this loop is because she wants to play word games instead of just telling me the truth. Paul, why are you interrogating me? I'm not the one changing it, am I? See? Here she is. Another trick to confuse you. She didn't even answer the question. She can't say, Yes, I'm helping my best friend cheat on his wife. Instead, she should try to fool me and make me into some crazy bastard who always overreacts. Damn it, I'm not exaggerating. I had almost decided to forget about it. Just making things worse makes it all not worth it. But I refuse to be led astray by her word games. This is her usual tactic. It's actually quite effective. But not today. She won't be able to refuse me today. I quickly move the car and drive into the impromptu parking lot with a squeal. Then I put the car in park and turned off the engine. Paul, what the hell? CC, I'm not playing with you. Give me some straight answers. We won't budge until you do this. What the hell is wrong with you? She shouts at me. I take the keys out of the ignition and put them in my pocket. A useless gesture, I know, but it makes my point abundantly clear. She sits and looks at me in disbelief as the seconds tick by. Lord, what an asshole you are! She finally shouts crossing her arms and pouting her lips. I silently sit in place, waiting. I won't let her distract me from this conversation any longer with confusing answers to my questions. I lean back and rest my head on the headrest. Wonderful. He cheats on Cynthia with someone from his office. He told me he felt bad but couldn't stop. This new woman makes him feel alive. She listens to him and understands him in a way that Cynthia simply cannot understand. Are you happy now? Well, where do you come in here? Are you providing him with an alibi, sitting and listening to a report of his sexual gymnastics? What are you doing for him so that he comes to talk to you about this? I'm just here to listen to Paul. This is all. You should try it sometime. I thought about this for a few minutes. Then, nodding, I start the engine again and drive out. Do you think what he's doing is wrong? I ask after a minute of silent driving. Maybe but I don't blame him for that. So you don't tell him to talk to his wife? You're not telling him that it's wrong to deceive her, are you? You just sit there and giggle with him about all the nasty things he's doing to this other woman. Am I right? She just shakes her head. Here you see? That's why I didn't want to tell you. You judge people so quickly. Really? Is it judgmental to tell your best friend that he is wrong for cheating on his wife? She lets out a moan. That is pure annoyance. That's not the point. This is your attitude. You're so sanctimonious. You don't like Gary already, so why would I tell you something that will make you dislike him even more? You won't even try to understand where it all came from. Where did it all come from? He's cheating on his wife. Who the hell cares where Mr. Cheerleader came from? I shout. How the hell doesn't she see this? She just snorts, shakes her head, and looks out the window. We don't say another word the rest of the way home. At the end of the day, the air in my house is cold, and I'm not talking about the air conditioner. CC walks around, deliberately ignoring me. This is very annoying, and I, in turn, do not try to attract her attention. Luckily for me, today is Sunday. Sunday is football. It allows me to not even worry about her being cold to me. Later, in bed, she continues to protest. When she comes out of the bathroom after her shower, she's wearing a baggy t-shirt that says, fuck you, not sex, and sweatpants that read, don't even think about it. When she gets into bed, she turns around so she's facing me. For a minute, we lie in dark silence. Each of us is trying to outsmart the other. Finally, I've had enough. I have to raise a question that has been bothering me all day. Cece, what if I cheated on you? Before I can finish, she instantly turns to face me. The movement is so fast, so sudden, 
that the blanket flies off me. Her face is a mask of anger. If I cheated on you, I continued, would you want Mike, my best friend, to be as unceremonious as you? Don't you wish he would tell me how wrong this is? Or would you like him to sit quietly and tell me different stories? I see her eyes begin to fill with tears, but she doesn't soften. That's not what I do, Paul. I told you, I'm just listening. He is my best friend. I'm not going to judge him, just like Mike wouldn't judge you. Also, I hope Mike will at least try to find out why you feel the need to cheat. That's what I'd like to know. Why? I would like to know what I do not suit you with, so that I can correct it. Don't you wish you knew that? Probably yes, I softened. Finally, I give up. I have to come to terms with the fact that we won't look each other in the eye. Besides, I won't let Gary's infidelity get in the way of my wife and I. This has already cost us one day together. We had a fun day today. Instead, I watched every game I could find, and she did whatever she wanted. Now, I won't have any sex. Listen, Cece, I'm sorry. Fine. I still think it sucks, and I don't like that you seem okay with your best friend cheating, but I'm not going to hold you accountable for it. Can't we please end this cold war? Her eyes sparkle with tears, and she nods. Okay. Sorry. You're right. We shouldn't quarrel. She comes to my side of the bed and hugs me. We kiss, a deep, passionate kiss. This kiss was both a white flag of surrender and an apology. Plus, it was imbued with promise, a promise of love and understanding. Even though we fought and disagreed with each other, we were still lovers and spouses. I love you, Cece, I say. I love you too, Paul, she says as I take her pants off. Her eyes are full of fresh tears. Never forget this. Do you hear? I hear, I hear you. We make sweet love. This is one of those great sessions. Married people know what I'm talking about. Every now and then you and your wife have that kind of other, intense, energetic sex. The kind of sex where you just can't get enough of each. I love my wife and I won't let Gary or anyone else stand in my way. The next day. I walk in the door and kiss my wife before heading to the bedroom to change out of my work casual clothes. While there, I see her phone light up on the nightstand and begin to vibrate. At first I didn't pay attention to it, but then curiosity got the better of me. My wife's phone is locked, but she has set it up so that when she receives a message, it will appear on the screen. She can't answer it until she unlocks her phone, but she can read it, so I can do it too. What I read shocked me at first. However, the pieces began to fall into place and make much more sense. When the full realization came, I was furious, the boiling fury of magma. The message was from Gary, and it said, Glad your romance is finally over. It was so bad. Your husband is a great guy. He doesn't deserve this. Besides, you know I can't keep secrets. What the fuck? Sayara! Subscribe to our channel so that your second chaff doesn't cheat on you and go ahead and listen to the next story, because this story is nothing compared to the next one. If you're under 18, don't even think about listening to the next one.